Hey guys, welcome back to Dinner Made Easy with Dina, and I'm Dina. Today we are going to try a new recipe. Um, this was given to me by my son, and I told him that we would try it out and see how that turns out. It sounds fabulous, especially for anybody that likes tacos, Mexican, that kind of thing. So stick with me, and I am going to pull that together, and we're going to... So here are some of the ingredients that we're going to be using to pull together our taco pie today. First thing we need to do is preheat our oven to 400 degrees and get our pie shell baked. And it will take about 10 to 12 minutes to bake our pie shell. While we're waiting for our oven to heat to 400 degrees, I'm just docking the pie shell to keep it from having any bubbles. And you want to make sure you do that because we want to maximize how much room is in this pie shell for all the goodness that we're going to be putting in there. So I poke all the holes in the bottom, the sides, and all the way around on my pie crust. And I place it on my cookie sheet to prepare it for the oven. So now we're going to place it in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes until it starts to brown. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Leave a comment. Comments are always welcome. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, I'd really appreciate it if you gave us a shot. I hope you enjoy the video and we'll talk soon. Next up, we're just going to prepare a medium sized onion. We're going to cut the. Now, if you're not an onion fan, you don't need to add the onions, but of course we love onions. So onions go in just about everything we can put them in. I've added about a pound of ground beef to my skillet and I have it set on about a medium high heat. Once we've broken up the ground beef, we're gonna add the onion that we've chopped up and we're gonna stir that all together and we just need to make sure that those cook down with our ground beef and it's going to add great flavor as we cook it. We're just about ready to add the rest of our ingredients. Make sure there's no pink left in the meat as you continue to stir it. Okay, we're going to add a can of Rotel, including the juice, to our skillet. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be adding a can of Mexican style corn. And that was the only Mexican style vegetables that I could find at my location. So I went with that. If you can find Southwest style vegetables, you could add that instead. But this actually turns out to be really delicious, just like it is. So we're going to continue to stir that in. And next thing we're going to do is add a half a can of refried beans. Hey, if you love those refried beans, add the whole can if you choose to. I'm just putting this together the way that the recipe was presented to me. I wanted to uh, really give it a good authentic try before I start adjusting anything. Um, and this was absolutely wonderful. So just stir all that in until you get the ingredients all incorporated and the refried beans start to kind of melt in with the rest of the goodies in that dish. And we just continue to stir it. Okay, once everything's incorporated really well, you wanna grab that taco seasoning mix that you have. If you have some that you've already made at home, use that. It's about three tablespoons of taco seasoning, and I just sprinkle that right in over the top, just like that. Now we're gonna give it a good stir and make sure that it really gets in there with all of those wonderful flavors we've already combined. It smells so good. I think this is absolutely a winter meal. Here we go, stir it all in really, really good. Okay, so we're gonna give this a taste test to make sure we have all of our seasoning just right. Oh, that tastes great. We don't need to add anything to it, but if you like to add extra hot sauce, feel free to do that. But we think it's absolutely perfect just the way this is. Perfect. Okay, next we're gonna just go ahead 
and we're going to turn that burner off. Um, it's ready to go, so let's just go ahead and turn that off. And it is time to get our pie crust out of the oven. Okay, so our pie crust is done. It is a nice golden brown, and we are ready to fill that up with our filling. So we're going to put about not about half of our filling in the bottom and kind of spread that around a little bit. Oops, let's chase that pie shell. It's pretty hot. Now we're going to go in with about a cup of uh, it's Colby Jack cheese that I'm using. And it's I used about maybe not quite a cup or so. You can use however much cheese you like. But I think I added about two-thirds of a cup of cheese. Then we're going to take the rest of our mixture and we are going to add it right on top of that cheese and fill that pie shell in. Now this is a nine inch frozen pie shell. So there is a lot of meat mixture here and I am really going to heat this up on top. I don't want to have to waste any of that. So we have that there we go. Okay, now I am going in with, oh, I would say about a cup, cup and a half of shredded Colby Jack cheese. You can use whatever cheese that you choose to. This just happens to be what I had on hand today. And make sure you try and get that covered really well. You want that cheese on there, mm, ooey gooey cheese. And it's gonna melt right over your topping. So. I also am going to add something else to this. I have a can of black olives and I'm draining the juice off of the black olives and they're sliced olives. So we're going to go ahead and add those to the top. Oh, I absolutely love olives. So that is something that we have to add. Now you can leave those off if you don't care for the black olives, but I happen to think they're wonderful. And we're just going to spread those around. You can use the whole can if you want. I chose to use about half the can. Because not everybody is as crazy about black olives as I am. But it actually uh, really tasted so good at the end. Now we're going to put this back into a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes until you see the cheese is melted and bubbly. Okay, while our taco pie is in the oven doing its thing, we're gonna make some homemade guacamole. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I'm gonna just use one avocado and we are gonna take the spoon and just scrape all of the avocado right out of the skin of the avocado. I find that to be the most effective way and you get the most avocado. So then we just take the spoon and just go right around the edges and scoop it right out. There we go. And then we are going to take a fork and we're going to kind of smash that up a little bit. And I find the fork works really well so we're going to do that. And let's just mix and mash all that really good together. Now you guys might have a different way of making your avocado um, dip or guacamole, whichever you prefer to call it. To me, this is a, a good way to make the guacamole and it's also really flavorful. So. You know, instead of spending money on the guacamole at the grocery store that you're not quite sure what's in it, I like to make it homemade. And it's pretty quick to do. So before our taco pie is done, this will be completed. Okay, once our avocado is mashed up really good, we are gonna take our sour cream and we're gonna add one tablespoon of sour cream. There we go. And we also have some chili paste, and you can buy this at the grocery store. And I add just about a quarter of a teaspoon of chili paste, just to give a little bit of kick to it. There we go, that's about right. 
and it doesn't take away from the flavor. It really does enhance it. Just don't overuse it. And we're going to do about a quarter of a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce as well. A few shakes in there. I didn't really measure it as you see. I just put a, a couple of shakes in. Okay. Then we're going to put about a teaspoon of mayonnaise in our mixture. This is just going to help make it creamy. There we go. Creamier, I should say. Okay, then I'm going to use some garlic powder. And like I said, I didn't measure. It's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, it's important to use onion powder and not the onion salt and the same with the garlic. That way we can control how much salt is in our dip. And we're going to use some of our Lowry seasoning salt. So that's going to add a little sodium as well. There we go. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon as well. Okay, now we're just going to stir that all up to combine everything. And then we'll put it in the refrigerator to chill while we're waiting for a taco pie to finish cooking. But the first thing we're going to do is what we usually do once we've got it all mixed up. Yep, you're right. We have to give that a taste just to make sure that we've got all of our seasonings perfect. This looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and let's taste that. So, so good. starting to look pretty darn good. We just got about another five minutes. Okay, we have taken this out of the oven and take a look at our taco pie. It looks amazing. I just topped that with a few green onions. And now we're going to cut right into it. Actually, I've let the pie sit for about, I'd say, 10 minutes. It was really hard to let it sit because it smells amazing. And I just wanted to take a great big bite of it. But anyway, we went ahead and we cut into the pie. And I'm going to get it onto the plate. It's, it's pretty darn hot still. See if we can get it over there without dropping it. Great. There we go. Just kind of square that up. <laughs> now I put a few more green onions on the plate. I absolutely love green onions with Mexican food. And we're going to put a little sour cream there. And then we're going to add some of our homemade guacamole. And this guacamole came out so good. So, and we're going to go ahead and set that aside. Take a look at that plate. Doesn't that look really delicious? Okay, let's give this a try and see just how well it turned out. Oh, it smells amazing. It looks great. We're going to give a little sour cream, a little of that guacamole right on the top. Mm. Doesn't that look like a good bite? Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. No exaggeration. This is incredible. Mm. You guys really need to give this a try. Hey, thank you so much for watching and giving me your time today. Really appreciate that. You have a great rest of your day, evening, whichever it might be. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys.